look at her on a beautiful, gloomy Friday in western New York. Hey, John. How's it going? Good, John. How are you doing today? Gloomy, right? Yeah. Weather? Getting, getting That's okay. Right. Yeah, man. It's going to warm right up again. Yeah, right. So. Yeah, the rain, the gloom. Now you can feel it in me. The gloom and the doom. Mm-hmm. Robin, how's it going? Today. Can't hear you. What? A little tired today. All right. Well, okay. Well, you better wake up because we got stuff to do here. Um, wait. How's it going behind the screen? I'm excited to hear some sports from Goal Getters. Best, uh, best sports talk show in Western New York by far. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we try our best, you know. Um, but here, John, let's uh, let's talk real. Well, let's just get into it right away. That's what we do here. Sure, the sports. Let's go. Um, we're going to go to the NHL playoffs that started, uh, we know, geez, we're in the, we're in the final four. Final four right now. And on the way here, we were saying, geez, this could be a Montreal, New York Islander Stanley Cup final, and what a shock that would be, right? That shocked a lot of people. Nobody expected it. Yeah. It, it's unbelievable. I wouldn't have guessed that in a million years. No. No. No, not if the you one. you had parlayed that at the beginning of the season, imagine how much money you'd have made. Well, how about right now? Just have a, If you have the Montreal Canadiens to win it all, I mean, yeah. at one point, it was like, it was a crazy, like, plus 5,000 or, or even more. I bet you at the beginning of the season, it had to be almost 10,000 to yeah, one. 10, I bet you did for them. I mean, that's a crazy, I mean, no one could, because, you know, as the season went on, it, they just weren't playing well. But right. they played that, that. I don't care. It's it's true. You're better off fighting to get in, and playing like you've had a playoff game. One instead of being the, another team, like some of the bigger the teams that were floating along, because they didn't have to play a meaningful game for two no, months. There's, there's no pressure on yeah. the team. It's just like they're sitting back, relaxing, and and then this happens to you. But that's yeah, like a, you're there. So. Well, well, that's like what we when the Sabers and some of the teams in the lower, like Ottawa. And Detroit. Oh, they're starting to play good. Well, yeah, because it doesn't matter no more. Yeah. You know, it's you're out of the race, and sure, we can run wild. We don't care. Yeah, nobody cares. No one's gonna. Yeah. So all the defensemen are active. In, you know, active and yeah. everything. All right. Well, let's get into the uh, game tonight. Tonight at 8 p.m. is Game Three of the uh, in Montreal. The Montreal Canadiens will be taking on the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, one interesting thing that just popped up 25 minutes ago, Dominique. Ducharme tested positive for COVID-19. Um, he has been vaccinated, so it'll be interesting with the way things have changed on COVID. He might be up behind the bench tonight. Yeah. You don't know yeah. how right. this will work. Um, so because of, you know, if it was before, he'd be gone. So would I, be, I wouldn't be surprised if he's behind there tonight. Mm-hmm. But that's the word that came out I saw before we went on. Um, that uh, Dominic Ducharme has tested positive for COVID-19. Let me ask you, John. Let's say he's not behind the bench. I'm going to guess it, it really won't matter. No, not, not for like a game three. It's also yeah. a <clears throat> pivotal game. Right. <clears throat> so this is make it or break it for the series to see who steps up tonight. So yeah, it doesn't matter. You don't think it matters, guys, right? I mean, they've been no. playing so well. Assistants are mm-hmm. there. They got the they got the system already down. You would right. figure. Um, you know, I sure think... they got a few Miami coaches there to help out. Well, you got both the assistants, yeah. you know, there. And I can't remember who they are. But, you know, I mean, the way they've been playing has been... Although, I will say, and this is what's so impressive about the Canadians. Game one, the Knights really beat them good, 4-1. I mean, they, 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 was a solid, they hadn't gotten beat like that since the Maple Leafs in game uh, four, or no, game three. Game three, because right. game three, game four, they won. So they were just beaten. And they hadn't lost a game. They, they were on a seven-game winning streak. Mm-hmm. And they lose this game 4-1. Uh, Cole Caulfield, who is an, uh, an outstanding yeah. young player. I mean, this kid, I he... Uh, He's going to be a good one. Yeah. Really good one. Yes. An American, playing really well. Yeah. Um, for a while. He had a goal. Uh, he had the goal, uh, and Corey Perry. You got to give him credit too. He's got to be closing in on forty, and he's a real playoff performer. Mm-hmm. You know, where other guys that might be that age shrink, like a Joe Thornton, they or fade, that. They, they yeah, they fade, fade. fade away. Yeah. This guy doesn't. He's like J- Jason Spez is a perfect example of someone who doesn't fade. Right. This guy here, Perry. Wow, you want him? You want him? He's thirty years old. Every team should just wait, and then at the end, when it's time, pick him up. And you know, at the uh, deadline, 
or at uh, free agency. Tyler Toffoli with an assist. Carey Price had a rough night. Um, four goals on 30 shots. And, of course, it's like an 86 point, uh, .867 save percentage. As for the, night, as, as for the Knights, um, let me see. Holden, Janmark, and Martinez. Wow, what a, what a group. Each with a goal. Um, yeah, and the Theodore. Jeez. Theodore, yeah. Wow, what a group of guys that scored bad. <laughs> you, know, you know what it's I mean? It's going to be a tough game tonight. Yeah, this is... This is getting serious yeah. for me. Yeah. Because you can't. This is nuts. Mm -hmm. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Well, anyways, uh, Mark Andre Fleury, of course, of uh, he's got a lot of background in this. He uh, gave up a goal on 29 shots, great save percentage of 96%. Um, so that was game one, which gave the Knights though a uh, one game to nothing lead. And I felt, John, uh, that it was. That was a good beating they took, and maybe things were changing. Uh, maybe they, you know, maybe the Knights were so big and fast that they were able to get through the trapping and all that. And if you recall, at the beginning of the year, Flurry didn't even know where he was going to be. You know, I know. Dobson, Morales, yeah. back and forth, Pittsburgh, who yeah. knows, I mean. Yeah, that guy's been, yeah, like, you remember when he originally left Pittsburgh? Yeah. You know, and they just kind of ran him out of town, and then all of a sudden, he, he was back. To, he's back to his normal self. Yeah, he definitely is. Did they have to agree to release on the? Because Mark Andre Fleury was in that the draft of um, when the Knights became an right, expansion right, yeah. team. Do they have to agree on that? Like, uh, do they have to? What I'm saying is, it seems like the Knights basically got you know such a star player right there. Um, why couldn't they pick up? Uh, for example, um, you know, Matthew. Matthew's probably was in the league by then. Uh, but, um, you know, like a star, another star player. Is there, was there, like, regulations well, on Well, they that? got one coming up for the Kraken, uh, Seattle Kraken. And I think what it is is each team has, there's, a, there's like, four forwards, three defensemen that you, you let be available. Oh, okay. And okay. there is a age limit. Like, you can't put out their 35-year-olds. Mm -hmm. But you also don't have to give up 21, you know, your... Young You're stars, star, right. so you put those middle of the road like guys, okay. and I think it's like you can choose between how many forwards and and how many defensemen, like, and everyone has to make them available, and goalies and a goalie too. Um, so yeah, that's how that one went down. Is I and remember Pittsburgh was yeah. that whole deal was the Penguins were going towards Matt Murray, and they kind like of just a, let him be expendable. Like a Robin Leonard could go there. You don't know. He could go to the Kraken. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, that's like I think the Maple Leafs are. They're gonna. I wouldn't be surprised if Kerfoot doesn't end up in the with the crack, and maybe Dermot. I mean, there's guys, but it's a big yeah. Because you, uh, you, you can't like. Because I always thought that too. Like, wouldn't it, well, you know what? Let uh, you know. Sometimes you have a 32 year old, but you and that's smart. Because why they shouldn't be? That'd be just so easy. Here, here you go, take him. Oh, they don't have to pick him though either. I mean, they don't have to. They don't have you to do it. it. You know they're going to be good right off the bat. That's the way it's been going. So, I know. It's like, well, Las Vegas for first year. I know. It was, but we know Pacioretty just was a surprise. Yeah. I mean, that guy in Montreal was really, um, he kind of was done. It looked yeah. as though he was just never Thought made it to what he was going to be. he was going to retire. Yeah, and, and he just got rejuvenated. And um, Ryan Reeves, even though I know he's just a tough guy, he helped. He helped that team. He just had that, that presence. It must you know? be being out in that great weather out there. Well, the Buffalo Sabres. Yeah. I mean, who did they lose to them? I, I mean, we could look. I, I wish I could remember. Did they lose McNabb to him, or am I thinking yes. it was a different team? No, he's there. Braden, the, the defenseman. That kid was good, and yeah. I knew he was good. On, I knew he was. You knew he was good mm -hmm. when he just played for the Sabres. I didn't want him to go. He's, yeah. he's solid. First couple of years, and they just let him let yeah, him walk, yeah. and and there he is, and he's playing well. So now we go to game two. This is where I'm thinking, okay, the Cinderella, you know, the whole thing, they're done. You know, the they're going to become a frog. It's over, and um, no, the Canadians come back game two and win three to two. Um, yeah. So this isn't a joke anymore. If anyone thought it was, because you know. And that, I think the le I think the second goal was uh, an empty net goal. I think it was three to one until the end, and then okay. the end, yeah. the last goal was, was an empty, net. empty netter. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, like, think about this though. You, all right, well, let me give you the rundown. The Canadians: Armia, Byron, and Toffoli. 
uh, goal apiece. Uh, big defenseman Edmondson with two assists. Carey Price has a good one. Two goals let up on 31 saves. Uh, 93 save percentage. The Knights now, um, two goals from uh, Alex Peter Angelo. Yeah. Really good defenseman. He's up in his He's getting there. We went through that. Remember when we checked his age, like 35? Yeah. So, uh, Flurry, rough night. Three goals on 23 shots. Um, but the Canadians, I mean, you know, everyone said the North Division was weak, or basically the North Division just wanted to, you know, it was a, it was a high thing. But now we're starting to see that maybe the North Division wasn't as bad as bad as you thought. Right. I mean, for the, the Canadians to win Game Two in a crazy Vegas crowd. Oh yeah. They had robots. They had everybody oh, jumping God, around over there. Transformers, remember? Yeah. Uh, guy pirates. They, it, but it was wild. Mm. Fire. It was pretty cool. And uh, but they were able to. Uh, to win this game means they could go to the Stanley Cup, mm -hmm. in my mind. If you're winning game two in someone's rank. It's always been like that yeah. for years. Whoever wins game three basically wins the series. Yeah, game three is huge. Because if the if Vegas can go to Montreal and win tonight, uh, well, then game, then I, I, it's funny. After game three, then every game after that is the next big yeah. game. Oh, yeah. And, um, because game two isn't as big. Because game two, let's say even Montreal lost it. All right, you're going to go home. You need three, though. You certainly can't lose game three, but you know. So the, if you're down two nothing, it's tough, but it's been done. It's been done. Oh yeah. Oh please, it's been done. <laughs> it's been done. Um, so the Canadians take that game, big game tonight. Game three is a, a humongous game at eight o'clock um, in that series. Now, knowing what everyone knows in this room about this series and about the Canadians and about Las Vegas, uh, uh, Wade tonight. It's going to be Game 3 in Montreal. I'm not sure how many fans are allowed to have, but still only 2,500. It probably is in Canada because they haven't really let up. Yeah. Um, but still loud. The place has been loud. It's been very loud. Yeah. Uh, what do you think tonight happens? I like the Knights because of... Um, I like the Knights because they, the competition they've already played, um, and I just really see Montreal not being able to, to do what... Uh, the the Cinderella the Cinderella story. I, I don't think they can. Um, I don't think they can win this series. I think the Knights really stick it to them tonight. All right, Robin. I gotta give the Knights the edge too. Although the Canadians have shown the ability to take down a team like the Leafs, which I think was, you know, probably one of the better teams in the league. So. Nothing would surprise me at this point with them, I guess, but I would say the Knights are probably going to win. John? Uh, like, game threes are pivotal, and the experience goes with uh, Las Vegas to just, just for being in the playoffs the past few years. Uh, i got to go with them tonight. Yeah, I'm going to go with them too, I, but I wouldn't be surprised if Canadians won game four. Wouldn't shock if this was 2-2 two -two going mm -hmm. back to Las Vegas. Um, they're resilient, Montreal, obviously. Yes. Right. I mean, to be down 3-1 and to just be beaten down like they were those two games and then come back and re rejuvenate and do whatever they got to do, then sweep Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. Not even close. Um, yeah. That I, would I be sh I think Las Vegas wins tonight, but I could definitely see a 2-2 tie yeah. heading yeah. back to Game 5. They're the tougher team, uh, Vegas. They are, but they got to do... I don't know what it is about... You know what it is? It's that, it's that line. It's that line with Gallagher. And the center, who we always forget his name because no one knows who the hell he is. Because, uh, but he's their first line center. Um, and I'm gonna bother getting into that again. I think I did that last show. I might have banged my head off a wall because I don't even like the guy. I just don't care. But he's a great. He's you know he's like he's like Bergeron without the scoring. Yeah. You know so. Their defensemen are solid too, all the way around. A big defense. Yeah. Shea Weber's old, but he's playing he's well. Plays good. He plays thirty minutes a yeah. game, right? Edmondson. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's a good group, they, it, but it's amazing because it wasn't. You know what I mean? It didn't show any of this until playoff time came, and uh, man, I, I still give Domin Dominique Ducharme some credit for something happened. He hasn't told us yet. You know, we are all assuming it's a trap. I can't see if it's a trap because I can't see the whole ice. Yeah. But Ducharme, no one's really said. You know what I'm trying to say? Like I. Even the analysts don't really say it's like the, the it's not like the New Jersey it's something different, mm -hmm. and um, he did something he had to have because that team was left for dead, 
and there was no reason why they shouldn't have been he, taken out. He saw something on video. Yeah. It's got to be. There's no, and maybe one of his assistants is responsible yeah. for it. But we'll never, we'll know someday. We'll know once they get knocked out or they win the Stanley yeah. Cup. No one ever tell. No for sure. I mean, if you, if I could see the, if you could see the whole ice, you'd be able to tell. Yes. But we don't see it on TV. It's very rare that you get to see a whole uh, while the game's going on. Like over in Europe, you can see it like that because they're it's bigger, huge, bigger yes. ice rinks over there. But we can't see. I right. can't wait to watch the game tonight to listen to more of the analysts. Yeah. Because they they would tell you. And that's why I'm wondering. Maybe this isn't. This is something different. This isn't the New Jersey style trap. You used to be able to see it. They would set it up like a. Um, it was like basketball, and it'd be like a like a trap. You know, mm -hmm. in, in basketball, when you're going to press. Like boring game is like. It would be three in this. There'd be three at center ice and two on the blue line. So basically, they were like, okay, kind of like basketball. I was like, all right, get by us. Mm -hmm. You know, try to get in, and then they chip it. You know, you end up having to chip it in. And they get, and usually the goalie would be the one who would come out and just clear always, it out. You always yeah. the score of the game was always like two one. Definitely right. Oh, they could win a one nothing game. It's, yeah. it's pretty crazy how uh, the strategy of hockey and the strategy of basketball is very similar. Very similar. Uh, you know, I remember uh, Phil Jackson with uh, with his coaching ability. Um, it maybe reminds me a little bit of that, I guess, with Montreal. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. No doubt, that's a good good yeah. comparison. I mean, this, yeah, because when he started that triangle offense, mm -hmm. no one knew what the hell was going yeah, on. Right. Yeah. Now he did have the players though. Like, we, yeah, like he yeah. came to New York with the triangle offense and it went to hell. So he had right. no Jordan. But you know, you're right. I mean, he divide this guy. Something's going on. I can't wait to find out. Yeah, we'll find out pretty soon. So I can't believe an analyst. That's why I'm saying, you know, an analyst would be screaming, "Oh, they're doing the." New I haven't heard them. The New Jersey yeah, trap. So maybe we're told to be quiet about this. Well, then they should be shitting. Them. Yeah. All right, anyhow, so the Canadians are, it's tied 1-1, and that means they're, they're you know, they needed to show they were legitimate because the North got a lot of a lot of heat saying they weren't that good. You know, Maple Leafs were good, but, oh, maybe, you know, really, I don't know, you know, Maple Leafs are good, and, and who knows about Edmonton. Edmonton and Toronto have that same kind of persona around them um, where you don't know about them. And, uh, and they deserve that persona because they don't win in the playoffs. Right. That's what you get. Mm -hmm. You're a great regular season team, and you can't do a damn thing. In the, so that you earned that. You earn every bit of it. So we've got that coming up tonight, 8 p.m. Going to be a good one. That, after that, then we got to go to the other series. Now another, another good one, and the Islanders are proving what they are. Is the uh, Lightning do have a two games to one lead on the Islanders? Uh, game one in Tampa, um, the Islanders win. Game one in Tampa, two to one. Barzal, Martin Barzal has. And I know he had a good he had a good playoff last year, but this is unbelievable. Yeah. This guy has really uh, the lights are on. You know he's really a star, and who would have known? Because there's a lot of times where he was kind of given uh, a soft kind of look about him, maybe not a performer. I, I like, mean, I like the way the Islanders are playing. Right? Yeah, yeah. Gonna be tough. they look good, and he scores again. He scored a lot in this playoff. Uh, Pulak scores a goal. Varlamov playing well, man. What he he had 31 shots, gave up a goal. Uh, 96 uh, 0.968 save percentage. The Lightning. Braden Point scores. Kucherov and Kalorn with an assist each. Vasilevsky, good game. Two goals on 31 shots. So you know the goalies did what they had to do. Right. And when you do that, a team like Tampa should be able to win if he only gives up two goals. Right. How many times you said that at the Leafs? Your goalie yeah, gives yeah. up two goals. Yeah. Please, you better win you know, right. with all that firepower. Mm -hmm. you have. So the the so the Islanders take a surprising one game to nothing lead, and I was shocked. I kind of was. I, I didn't see that was one, and I was looking at it from a betting aspect, and I was, and I looked at it and I saw, geez, the Islanders are like plus two eighty, and I thought, man, all right, I'm not gonna mess with it. But I did that with the Canadians too. Game one, they were like plus three hundred. Or 320, and I didn't didn't do anything. Game two, they probably were plus 350, and whoever went with them had a nice night. Yeah. You know, you you put you put 100 dollars on that. That's a good day. Mm -hmm. That's better than day trading. I mean, that's a good one. You know, you've come out. So, anyways, back to the Islanders. Game two comes around, and the Lightning show that they're still there. Um, they win four to two. The Islanders. Barzell scores again yeah. with Brock Nelson. Now he's unbelievable. All year, he's all year. He is going to, you know what this is doing for him? He could be hearing uh, the cash register because right. this is going to get him in that $7 to $8 million range a year. 
And if the Islanders don't want to do it, someone else will. And um, so good for Barzal as he uh, has so done that. Like the Rangers snatch him up. Sure. You know, someone who should snatch him up? Your team, the yeah. Sabres. There's a the goal sure. there. You want to give that bum Skinner $9 million. You know, tell yeah. Skinner to go away. You know, I mean, he's yeah. to Seattle. This is the type Seven. of guy you want. Um, so, okay, Brock Nelson scores. Varlamov has a rough one. He gives up four goals on only 27 shots. Sor- they pull him for Soroykin, who only faced six shots. As far as Tampa Bay goes, um, you know, Hedman, Victor Hedman scores. Palat scores point again. Uh, Ruda scores a goal each. Kucherov with three assists. Vasilevsky again, only gives up two goals. Yeah. And... Um, you know, on, on the reason you're always been uh, winning, I mean, the same core of guys every year, year in, year out for like five or six years there. And it finally, remember though, it finally broke for them because they were in the same. If you yeah. think about it, they were like the Leafs. There was that time where it was like mm-hmm. they can't, they couldn't, they win. can't break through. You know, um, with all this talent, what are you going to? Why isn't the? Why aren't they breaking through? And Vasilevsky is probably yeah. why they're breaking through, you know. Right. Um, it's it's the issue that Toronto and Edmonton have with all the firepower. They're still not that guy. Because as good as even the goalies for Edmonton and Toronto have played this year, Mike Smith and Campbell, they're not, you know what I mean? They're not that. No. You right. know? They're just not. And, and, and it's not even their fault. Fu- and I will say, both teams, goaltending wasn't their issues for Edmonton and Toronto. Right. It really wasn't. No. It, wasn't no. it, was, it was the lack of scoring for the big guys. So the yeah. experience comes with it. Yeah. And then game three comes along and Tampa wins the game two to one. Uh another good role player club. This this line. This line is incredible for Edmund, for the Islands. Clutterbuck, Sezekis, yes. and Martin. And uh Clutterbuck scores the goal, Martin with an assist. Barlamov has a better game, two goals. he only gives up two goals. You should you know, it's, that's a good day. Um for the Lightning Gord scores and point again. Score, geez, point. Yeah. Uh, scores and Vasilevsky gets up one goal. And this guy's just, yeah. you know, just shutting he, the door. Head and shoulders. He's just, sure. he's just, uh, he's the best in the game right now. And uh, and if they win the Stanley Cup, he'll win the Conn Smythe. And he has to because he's just. You're giving up two goals a game every game. And Tampa Bay's doing it. I mean, geez, Tampa. You think about. It, he's only giving up two goals. Yeah. There's Every game. Um, there's nobody, nobody's going to be in the final thing. I'd be shocked, yeah. You want to talk about David versus Goliath, like if Tampa played uh, Montreal. That'd be incredible. It'd be, over, it'd be over really early there. You would think. Mm-hmm. Who knows with Dominique Ducharme and all of his nonsense and yeah. his trickery. Yeah, <laughs> who knows? So maybe it could be a big deal that he's not behind the bench. I don't think so, though, because I think the assistants are going to be fine. Yeah? Yeah, i, I got to imagine by now. The assi- you know what I mean. And it isn't like he's not going to be in contact with them. True. That he has to be sequestered. He'll be able to, you know, even if he is sequestered, he's, they, they, they can talk. He'll be up in a booth somewhere. Yeah, and there, then there's ways to get your message. You know, they text. Yeah. And all that stuff. So, but you're right. I mean, I know it could be, but I, I just, you know where I think it could have been is if they were in trouble. Like, let's say they were getting hammered and maybe it's just a, a uh, emotional thing. Yeah. Then he's gone. But yeah. they're winning and they don't care anymore. You could put me back there. And I think they win. Sure. Yeah. I could stand back there, give him his two assistants, and mm-hmm. uh, why not? And they'll win. I'm not saying I do anything, then I leave and he comes back when he feels better. That's <laughs> all. We'll be, we'll be good. So don't forget game four tomorrow at 8 p.m. And uh, let's go and talk about this for one second. Tampa is up two games to one. We are in New York in for New York, game four. Yes. It is the oldest arena next to the Madison Square Garden. Um, but it's got a lot of attitude. That's you know what I mean. That's your old style rink. That's like if the odd was still open. Oh yeah. That is a it's your last standing real hockey rink mm-hmm. where it isn't just everyone's the same. You know, it's and it, sad, it's loud. That, yes. Incredibly loud. I don't know how. You know why it's loud? Remember how? And I remember how Maple Leaf Gardens was, and I think Montreal the Forum was, and the odd. The seats go like this, like like they're You're really down, yeah. Yes. Now they kind of put them to where they're more. Slanted like, but before, remember going into the oranges? It felt like you were going to tumble over oh, and yes. off, off yeah, the thing. That's yes. how steep it was, um, and it was hard walking up the stairs. I, I actually mm. got dizzy up here yeah. more than once. That's yeah, cool. and I remember. I'm afraid of heights, and I mm-hmm. it yeah. drives me nuts. I remember at Maple Leaf Gardens. It was the same thing. Yeah, I it was the same that. thing. They were packing people in, and they were making it to where it was like ugh, everyone was on top of the ice. Now they've spread people out. 
But my whole point is the Islanders have that still. It's still I felt the same safer room. in his, the old standing room at the yard. That was way better. <laughs> I used to do that sometimes, yeah. standing room. You could do that real cheap. Mm -hmm. Three bucks, Three standing bucks. room. Yeah, so and I did it at Maple Leaf Gardens too before. Mm -hmm. And it was it was although Maple Leaf Gardens wasn't cheap, it was a playoff game and I think I spent fifty just to stand. Okay. So um <laughs> it was like a hundred and forty to get a seat and that was like early two thousands yeah. or so. So Actually, it was more than yeah. It was about 150 a seat mm -hmm. for that Flyers playoff game. Remember? I remember yeah. That yeah. Series too. So let's talk about this game for in New York. Tampa up two to one. No one's really getting hammered too bad. It's it's all close. I mean, four two, probably an empty empty net goal. I don't know. Um, but two one. Series lead. Anything weighed on this one in New York game four. Uh, I, I see it going kind of the way that it has been going. Uh, and when you have the best goalie in the league, um, you win them games. You know, yeah. you win them um, games two to one. And I, it kind of reminds me of uh, the old Dominic Hasek a little bit, uh, just mm -hmm. not as crazy with his goaltending, um, how he is a goaltender. But solid goalie, they go and win the cup in my mind. Right. Robin? I actually agree with Wade. I think they're all they're gonna win, and for all the same reasons. Because I just think that they clearly have the best goaltending. It's been like that all year, and like you said, I, I think he'll end up being the con Smythe. Yeah, John. I'm liking uh, Tampa. I mean, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be over very quick. They're gonna score right away, and uh, put put them to bed soon. Thank you. Yeah. I. I do like Tampa to win the game, but if the Islanders could score first, I think you could have something interesting happen here. You know, Barlamov stands on his head. Barlamov's got a match Vasilevsky, yeah. right? I mean, he can't every game, but some games. Well, I, why would I say that? He's played well. I mean, the firepower. We talk about firepower. He only gave up one goal game one, and uh, uh, game two he got. He had to be pulled. That's what I'm saying. You never know what you're going to get. Like Barlamov doesn't feel like the guy. See, in the past, the guys were like, you thought of um, uh, Curtis Joseph, you thought of Ed Belfort, yeah. you thought of, uh, like you say, Hasek, you'd think of even, um, you know, uh, not Carey Price, the other guy, uh, Patrick Waugh. Those were the guy. Ronnie right. Hicks, Ronnie Hicks, Mark, yeah. Mike Brodeur. Yes, Brodeur. Yes, Brodeur. That's a good one. And, you know, you just thought of, and you knew. But then... You know, sometimes someone the Ar Archers are big. Sometimes someone would step up and like, whoa, this guy really had a hell of a playoff. But um, yeah, I mean, I think Varlamov is not the guy, and I have to agree with Wade and all the rest of you. The Lightning will probably take a three-game to one lead tonight. Um, don't underestimate the Islanders, though, obviously, because there's a lot going on there, and um, there's a big. You know, they have a tough team. They are a tough team. Oh, I mean, yeah. they, they're not going to go down easy. No, not at all. But. You know what? Why don't we yeah, take? Tough crowd too. Oh yeah, let's take our first break, and we'll be back to talk about NBA and a lot more.
A judicial election is not about political affiliations and party politics. It's about the right experience and qualifications. That's why Dominic Saraceno is the best choice for Niagara Falls City Court Judge. Dominic Saraceno is the only candidate with over 20 years experience as a criminal defense attorney and public defender. He understands how his decisions will help individuals and families and has the courage to address the important issues in Niagara Falls and to make the right decision, even though it may not be the popular decision. On Tuesday, June 22nd, vote Dominic Saraceno for Niagara Falls City Court Judge. Hey, Western New York, CJ Spiller here, telling everyone to watch Gold Getters live every Friday at 6 p.m., where they'll give you up-to-date sports info. It's a great show, so be sure to leave your comments below. You like how I rhyme with that? And we're back, and, uh... Let's get into the NBA. Sure. NBA's been great this year. I've enjoyed the playoffs. Oh yeah. Uh, I immensely. Too. And yeah. um I can't remember the last time you know, last time we were here last week. But anyways, the Suns did sweep the Nuggets, if just to remind everyone, because I've no one's seen the Suns because they're waiting. Um they swept 4 0, Booker, Aiden, CP three, Bridges, all these guys. Little bad news on C on Chris Paul though, we don't know if he's gonna start the series. The shoulder must have been worse than they thought, and um, so he, we don't know if he will be there or not. Uh, hopefully he will, for, so we could see everyone at full strength, and uh, so that's them. Uh, tonight, we've got some really good games on tap. Um, first one I'll, I'll go with, John, is the Clippers. That's at 10 o'clock tonight. The Clippers lead the series 3-2. to two. I, I don't believe they've ever closed. I, I think this this is like a monumental thing for the Clippers if they were to win this game tonight. I think I'll be watching this one. It's going to be yeah. a good matchup. Yeah, game. Now, game five. Like you like the Clippers? Yes. Game five, the Clippers um, won the game 119 to 111. Now, here's the deal with this. Me, sitting there as a person who likes to maybe have do a wager, um, thought Utah. You know, all right, we don't have. We know Kawhi Leonard might be done for the whole series. Paul George has done nothing. He's actually he's actually the brunt of a lot of jokes. Well, guess what? I lost my bet, and the Clippers won 119-111. Paul George had 37. Uh, Marcus Morris with 25. Reggie Jackson with 22. Um, for Utah, Donovan Mitchell had a rough game, only 21, but Bogdanovich, he had 32. So that was game five. It was a huge game for the Clippers to win. Game six tonight, like I said, 10 p.m., it's in Los Angeles. This is a humongous, I don't know if the Clippers have ever won. First of all, I, I, I really don't know if the Clippers have ever been this far along. They probably haven't. No. Were the Clippers the Braves? Yes. yes. Right? Because the Braves, didn't it go like to, San, to New York? No. I, it didn't go right to L.A., the Clippers. The they Clippers were San, they went to San Diego. San Diego, that's yes. right. And now this should be Buffalo. Mm -hmm. Darn it. This should be the Braves. Maybe we should root for them. Mm hmm Right? Yeah. I love yeah. the Braves. Yeah. Buffalo Braves. Be cool uniform, the powder blue. Yes. We could support it here oh, yeah. in Buffalo. We live in Buffalo. If you're outside of the area, we, we're Buffalo, talking to us. Buffalo we're talking support, to you from Western they, New York. They'd support anything professional. Yeah. If you, you yes, and I and I think that basketball would be perfect. Oh yeah. We love basketball here. The little three, the whole deal. And that's just and when I say little three, it's Niagara, St. Bonaventure, and Canisius. And uh, you know, really. I mean, they're Division One schools, but, you know, on the lower end, Division One. But still, they can make the tournament. Mm -hmm. They win their divisions. I shouldn't say it about St. Bonaventure, because they're in the Atlantic 10. They're in a little higher division than niagara Canisius. Oh, yeah. But, um, anyhow, as I, I, I digress oh, back, yeah. I don't know what the hell I'm getting into that for. Um, tonight is Game 6. Kawhi Leonard's out. Knee injury, not sure if he'll be available. If there's a Game 7... And we know John likes the Clippers to close this out and something that would be monumental for them. Wade, any thoughts on this one? And it's in L.A., Clippers up 3-2. Um, I, I like Utah bringing it to Game 7. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, no I, I love the style. I love the team play with Utah, and that's really what got them to that number one seed. And uh, it isn't just like... Uh, Kawhi Leonard or George, and right. you know, uh, it is really just a, the team atmosphere there. I think they'll come together tonight, bring it to a game seven, and um, I'll, uh, I believe they're also going to win game seven. Robin, I think there will be a game seven, but I think the Clippers will win in seven. John, you do like you said already, you like the Clippers tonight to close it out. Yes, to close it out. Now, I, I do 
go with Utah tonight. My reasoning is there is no Kawhi Leonard. I think tonight Paul George goes back to how he's played all season, and I think he, uh, I don't think he can carry them. Well, he might prove me wrong. I hope he does. He can score forty or thirty-seven again, but he hasn't. He this is a big. This was this was a, unbelievable. Everyone was shocked. I was listening to like Shaq and them, you know. Like they say, next man up. Right. Yeah. I think they said that he was a. You know, they said that he was a. They've been. He's been like an internet. Like people always made not a joke. That's not the right word. But you get my point. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Utah tonight. And um, if Kawhi's not back, I'm going with Utah to win in seven. If Kawhi's back, then I think we got a whole other story. I think if Kawhi Leonard was there tonight, the Clippers are winning because he's a big time, big yes. game performer. What he did in Toronto just told me. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, right. this guy is one of the one of the top, you know, uh, clutch people. I still can't believe they let him go. I mean, well, I don't think it was his fault. No. They wanted him. Yeah, he just was... he wanted to leave. They wanted him. Mm-hmm. He decided to go, which was a shame because he should have stayed. He, they, he was a he's a legend, and they haven't won a championship there. The Blue Jays had, but you know that was a while ago. They would have matched any money. I Definitely believe. do it. They got they would have matched the money of the Clippers. Anybody? And, they have uh, the most in the league. I bet you Toronto. That's a huge. That's Rogers. He's you know, like a, a Gretzky there. Of course, yes. I mean, he yeah. over he overtook Vince Carter, and the Vince Carter years weren't that great, anyways. No. He just could dunk on people and be on a poster. I mean, this was different. He left. It's a. It's really a shame. But I will give the I will give the Raptors credit. They went for it and they got their title. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like what the Royals did, what the well, definitely what the Cubs did. All the Cubs are good this year. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you might as well. Yeah. I mean, and I think, and sadly, the Maple Leafs do it all the time, and they just never have the right mix. You just got to go um, for it every year, year in, year out. Well, think of I Buffalo. Mean, think yeah. of the team you're wearing right now or the Sabres. If they have that shot, if you had a shot and they said, hey, guess what? You're going to win the World's, you're going to win the Super Bowl or the Stanley Cup, but in the next five years, you ain't gonna, you're not going to be good. You'd probably take the shot. Say, yeah, I'll take the cup. Take it right Take now. It now. Yeah, but the next five years is going to be tough. You're going to have to rebuild, go back to the drawing board. You do it. Mm-hmm. I yeah, do absolutely. it. Why not? Yeah. Especially for places that are starved for championships. Well, you know? Raiders been on the drawing board for twenty years. Oh, I wouldn't do that in New England. Well, you don't have to in New England because <laughs> you guys win everything that whole damn state. Uh, please. Yeah, listen to this guy. Yeah. He does. <laughs> All right, so that's that. That's that game. Let's go on to tonight. I can't wait for this game. There's something about this series I really, really like, and it's probably because of how much I dislike the Hawks. Um, tonight, I think we all do. Uh, unbelievable yeah. game, game uh, five. I watched it. Sixers had a 26-point lead, and it just seemed, I mean, it was, and it, it, I don't even know how to, to respond to what I saw there in Philadelphia. And um, Trey Young with 39. Don't like him, but he's pretty good. He is good, but... Yeah, he's annoying. Yeah. And he's one of those rats, yeah, but he can shoot from anywhere. Away. I mean... He's, a, he's like that son of... That he's, he's announcing the games with Kevin Harlan, who I love yeah, Kevin Harlan. Yeah. It's, uh... Tell me... Reggie his name. Miller. Reggie Reggie Miller. Miller. Oh, pain in the ass, but, but wow. He's basically the same kind of guy. Yeah. yeah. Just, just hit, shoot from anywhere and make it. You can't even give him a chance. Uh, but anyhow, the um, Embiid again. This guy, another one like Barzell. He has come out to show that he's more than what we thought. You know, a regular season guy, kind of a goof. Everyone thought he was very immature. Thirty-seven points again for him. Seth Curry at thirty-six. Yes. That was a big game for Seth Curry. Um, but they lose 109-106, and the, the Philadelphia had a 26-point lead. And, uh, wow, the Atlanta is going home tonight um, at 7-3 to eliminate Philadelphia. I don't know of any injuries at all. I know that Embiid has been playing hurt because we know he has a torn patella tendon in his uh, one knee. Right knee, I think. Yeah, right knee. Right. And the other day he hurt his other knee, uh, but I think he's fine. Yeah. Um, whatever's going on, that guy deserves a lot of credit because he's playing hurt. I mean, it's not even... It's he could pack it in like some of these other guys have, and he's not, you know. Yeah. Um, so, knowing all of this, let's have some uh, predictions here. First, Wade, what do you think? Uh, Everyone's relatively healthy, from yeah, what I understand. I, 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 ben mm-hmm. Simmons needs to really step up he to has the plate, been and yeah, just uh, a no show. So, uh, for the 76ers to real to win. This series, I think that uh, Embiid need, needs more help, um, and uh, that's 
comes from Simmons. Uh, it should come from him. This is the star player that this is supposed to be a franchise player. Yeah. Uh, so uh, not Good. seeing that, um, and that's unfortunate. But uh, I, I hope the 76ers pull out. Uh, I like the team. I like the team. Um, so I, I'm hoping they pull it off. I just, and B needs help. That's my, that's what he I'm going to say. If, and if he doesn't get the help, Hawks win. Robin. I definitely agree with that. Um, it a lot of it does depend on Embiid and people performing like they've been performing in the regular season. Um, I think Philly wins Game Six, but Atlanta wins the series. John, I'm liking Philly to win tonight, and hopefully they'll win Game Seven. It's going to be tough for them, but at Trey right. He's a son of a gun. Yeah. And that's what scares me about tonight's game, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm liking the Sixers to win. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. with Young, you know, Young doesn't get much help. He, he doesn't, I mean, he kind of, he's got, who's he got? He's got that one guy, Gagliardi. Gagliardi. He doesn't score much, yeah. but he's just a pain. He's a big guy. I feel like he was a Nick. He, he might have been, yeah. And um, he's just kind of a pain. But he, he defends well. Um... But as far as I agree, again, I have to agree with Wade. I mean, he needs help in beat, and Seth Curry gave him that help, and they blew a 26-point lead. Because yeah. um, when you get 36 from Seth Curry, who is capable? I mean, the way he, he's like a Trey Young. Mm-hmm. I mean, he can make shots from anywhere. And um, so tonight, I, yeah, I'm going to say Atlanta closes it out. I really hate to say it, but I hope not. And if and if Philadelphia wins this game, they're winning Game Seven. Yes. There's no way they're going home to lose Game Seven. I'd be that would be it. I don't see it as long as everyone's healthy. I think Atlanta wins tonight. I'm rooting the other way and hoping I'm wrong. But I just feel like uh, after losing a 26 point lead, I don't know what one or two things can happen tonight <laughs> that either really made them. I don't do say furious, whatever, after losing a game like that, or they're just they're defeated. I don't know. We'll see in the beginning. So that's tonight at seven thirty. The last series has been uh, better than I thought it was going to be, but the Nets have suffer, suffered injuries too, and uh, one of the biggest ones they could have it, out of those three, Kyrie Irving was number two in that. You, it's hard to lose him. It, 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 I mean, I, but yeah. still, I don't want to cry for them because they have Durant yeah. and they have Harden and, and yeah. others. I mean, there's some others. I mean, they're not that great, but there's others, um, right? Yeah. I mean, they got, a, got a, they got a bunch like the old Chicago Bulls. Yeah, and guess what? They would have been eliminated mm-hmm. if if Giannis could catch a pass. If Giannis could have held the ball, Game Five's over. This series is done, and the Bucks are the winners. Um, game Five, he had it in his hands. Mm-hmm. It was right in his hands. And that's Giannis's problem. Generally, in the playoffs, he's been a little bit known for kind of that maybe getting a frog in his throat type thing. Mm-hmm. But uh, I won't call him choking. We'll see. Um, but last, the other day, it was close because yeah, he had the out. ball right in the, you, Did you see? You got, he, he had the ball. He had it. He had it right in his hands. He had it turned and dunked. Yeah. And game's over. And he just, it just fumbled. And, uh, you know, and, and, and the Nets yeah, hold on. I, I know and then remember, what's his name? Played every minute of that game, uh, Durant. He, he played 48 player. minutes, and he had 49 points, and he should have had 50, but he missed the one free throw, but he was 16 for 17 from the line. When he wants to, he's the best player in the world. Yes. This guy's unbelievable. And to, uh, Game 7 comes up. Let's talk about Game 6 real fast. The Bucks beat them down, 104-89. to um, Giannis had 32. It was Middleton with 38. And Drew Holiday's pretty good. He had 21. Durant with 32. You can't ask for more. He's sitting on the bench for a lot because this game was out of hand. Harden, boy, yeah. only 16. And I'm going to tell you what, he might he's hurt because he, I watched him just let a guy go. You could tell whatever it is. I forgot what his injury was. Oh, it was hamstring. Whatever he can't. Yeah, he can't, like, turn. Mm-hmm. I mean, for some reason. And uh, I give him credit for being out there. I mean, of course, because he is hurt. I don't know what Kyrie's up to. I haven't heard what his injury is. Um, so don't know if he'll be back for Game 7. Game 7 set for Saturday at 8.30. That's a real good one in, in uh, Brooklyn. Um, we don't know the availability of Kyrie. I'm guessing he won't be back. Um, so here it is, man. What do you think, Wade? Fingers crossed that um, 
the Bucks take it. Right. Ah, they got it, Robin. I'm rooting for the Bucks, but I think the Nets are going to win. John. I'm in the same boat. Uh, I want Milwaukee, but Brooklyn's going to win. So. I want Milwaukee, too. Yeah. Um, my only thing for that is that Durant is just a machine, and and he he single handedly won Game Five or He's Game Six, Game in Five, and they should have lost Game Five. Really, this I'm telling you, this should be over. But I will give the Bucks. I mean, it, it should be over. Mm -hmm. This series should be done. Um, and he's just uh, he. I'm gonna assume he plays every minute. Yeah. And he will um, unless somehow they get him into he foul trouble. Into or something weird. Um, he's not going to miss his shots. Mm -hmm. He right. doesn't miss foul shots. Nope. Um, that's like Embiid, too, by the way. He doesn't miss foul shots. Mm -hmm. He's unbelievable. But back to that Sixers with sh shooting the ball. Much better. Those way ahead of way ahead of Giannis, though. He, he, you know what I mean? Right now, guys like Embiid. I don't know if it's a maturity levels, and it's funny to say about Embiid because he was the most. He was considered very immature, but. Giannis is just somewhere that, and he can shoot the ball too. He's shooting threes from downtown. I mean, way down. And these guys are big, yeah, seven yeah, footers. Remember, remember how like Shaq was oh, struggling at the line? Oh, horribly. You have to shoot twenty percent. Yeah. And you weren't going to see Shaq shoot a three. No, not at all. The one guy I remember Manute Bowl shooting a three. Yeah. And it was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. These guys are the size of Manute Bowl almost, yeah. and they're huge, big men, dribbling down the court like Magic Johnson. So I'm going to go with the. Uh, with Durant and the Nets, but hoping for an upset to put the Bucks into the. Uh, well, and they'll be awaiting the uh, Atlanta series if it doesn't. If that doesn't end tonight, um, so that's our NBA thoughts. For um, you know, I, I can't. Anything else, you guys, on NBA? I mean, we went through the series. Um, I think Wade made a good point though Sorry. on that one series about uh, Embiid. He, if you can't find a Seth Curry to step up and, and help, they're gonna they might be they really might be done tonight. Yeah. And we can't expect Ben Simmons to because he just hasn't. I don't know what's and he hasn't like all season. Like is this just didn't start. He's been weird. It's been like almost to you be a bench guy. Mm -hmm. Don't understand what's happening. But um Do you guys think it works to Phoenix's advantage that they swept and have yes, all this yes. time to rest? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially with no Chris job. Paul, yes. right? Yeah. They need Chris Paul badly. But, um, yeah, I think the rest, they can't beat it. Eight and two. You know, he's a big guy. And, he, yeah. and, he, and he's like an old school here. And he old, shoots threes. But he gets down on the block, you know? Right. And you see him pushing people and doing all that. And I love playoff basketball because it's the closest to basketball I remember. Yes. yes. Still not the same, but it's definitely the closest. It's getting near, though. Yeah. And it should get there because that's when that's good basketball. Yeah. Um, I don't like. You know what? I still like some of the new rule changes. Like I like that. You know, the defensive three seconds. I think that's good. Um, I like all the rule changes. I like even trying to stop the hand checking because that was getting ridiculous back when I used to watch. Remember how when we remember back in not when I used yeah. to watch back in the you know Larry Bird days. I mean, it was getting a little crazy. I mean, you just hand you know. But uh, so I think there's a good happy medium in the playoffs. Yes. And um, it's enjoyable to watch. I know people, if you don't have a team, it seems like in the NBA, like a, a local team, people don't tend to, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but the NBA is the biggest thing going. Yeah. It's still got the most viewers. It's, it is it, the, it's the league in the, yeah, world. in the world. And it, we talked about this last show. All right, so let's move on to another subject that is, um, you know what? I forgot something. Darn it. We got we to gotta, we gotta jump back for a minute. I forgot Eichel. I apologize. Uh, I, okay. I, I flowed the wrong way. I was like that guy. Remember Jim Marshall when he went mm -hmm. the wrong way for the yeah. Vikings? That was like me. <laughs> I, yeah, sure, yeah, I know. I, that's what I just reminded him that you guys should have been like pointing to go the other way. And then he spikes the ball, Jim Marshall. Yeah. Anyone young out there don't know uh, what the hell I'm talking thought he, about. Thought he did good. Well, I hope you're not under 60 because you don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> but no, just watch it someday. Jim Mar Put in Jim Marshall for the Vikings and watch him. Was it a fumble or an interception? I don't even remember. It was a turnover. Was a yeah. He picked it, it up and went the wrong way. And he was so happy. And he scored. And he went in his own end zone and spiked the ball. Yeah. And everyone was telling him, "You're going the right." And they were pointing at him. He didn't yeah. care. He just kept going. So look up Jim Marshall for the Minnesota Vikings. What happened after the spiked ball? Was that did somebody jump on it? Was it, it a safety? Yeah, it was yeah. safety. Yeah. It went out of bounds. And he was 
then he really and he was dancing he was so happy and then it was just pure you know devastation so <laughs> he was out of league fast yeah like I'm gonna be out of here fast because I just went the wrong way but anyway let's go to Eichel real fast I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this guy because we continually do yeah, we know he's hurt it's every day it's, yeah it's, we, getting, it's dragging right now I, I'll, I'm gonna read a quote I wrote I found from Pierre Lebrun Pierre Lebrun says I'm hearing this is gonna happen in days not weeks LeBron and Friedman both said it's going to happen before the July 23rd draft. The rumor that I saw was Anaheim and Anaheim. They, well, they both have, um, like, I think the Sabres have what? They have the first pick overall in the third? Or yeah. just the first? The first, yes. And I think, like, uh, Anaheim's in the top ten, too. So there, you got that. You also have this. The names are Trevor, Z- Trevor Zegris, center. He was a ninth pick overall in 2019. Playmaking type defense. Uh, um, Center. Then they said Jamie Drysdale. He was the sixth overall pick in 2020, yeah. and he's supposed to be not a tough guy, but a puck mover. Mm-hmm. You know that style, big skater and all that. And I'm sure also a player better be should be coming back, yes. one that can play now. You know in the NHL, um, and a pick, mm-hmm. and that would be what you get. Now I still, I'm telling you, I think this. We'll see, but other people have said it too that the injury of Eichel is a tough. Deal. Yeah. It's a it's a tough one because you got to find a team that's willing to say you know what I'll take I'll this take wait the four or five months and and everything you just said um, Sabers win that trade with oh, yeah. that with, with that Sabers win that trade mm-hmm. uh, give it a a possible person who could never be what he was possibly um, yeah. Yeah. and uh, I know this year isn't that great of a NHL draft but. Um, Sabres, you got them young players. Keep on building it yep. up, and uh, you can have something great. Definitely. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, the Avengers talk to Sam Ryan are going to Vancouver. Vancouver. Mm-hmm. Man, it'd be interesting to see what that would bring. I couldn't bring back two. I mean, Sam Ryan are isn't the like all, and it would be it'd be interesting what it brings back though. It'd be interesting. I'm curious what that would be. Oh, they're both going. It's just oh, a matter yeah. of when and who. But the Eichel injury just makes me. I'm telling. I believe what I heard. From uh, I wish I remember who I think it was Bruce Boudreau on NHL Network is going to be a difficult sell, and to get his worth, his complete worth. I had and a friend tell told me today they can't make trades to the Stanley Cup so rest. You can make trades. Oh, you can do whatever you want. You're around. It doesn't yeah. matter. It's just a lot of times they would wait. Yeah. To not they wouldn't want to steal any of the fun, you know the yeah. publicity from the cup. Yeah. I remember, but you do what you want. Oh yeah. yeah. Fire people. But I just, I, I'm t- people. yeah, right. So I mean, we'd have to see. That would be a hell of a trade for them. I do, who knows what Drysdale? He's not ready to come in the NHL. Z- Zgrass is not an NHLer yet. They would definitely be wherever they are and staying there. Um, the biggest thing would be getting. I'm curious what uh, skater they would get. Real NHL skater yeah. from Anaheim. A smooth uh, puck angle. And I'm not even sure who. They, I, Anaheim has been off the radar for so long. It's hard to even remember what's on the team. Um, but. Uh, there's your update on Eichel. That's all for him. I, I can't yeah. anymore. Um, and the Sabres just are tiring me out. They tired me out. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been exhausted for 40 years. Yeah. So um, let's move on to baseball real quick. Um, real fast, I'll touch on the Yankees, but I'm not going to go through there like I did last week. We did last week. Yeah. Let's just tell you, they won two out of three from the Blue Jays in Buffalo. It was cool seeing them in Buffalo. I thought. Um, they are 36 and 32 now, the Yankees. Next up for them is the A's. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's always a tough series there. Oh, yeah, the A's are good. Mm-hmm. The A's are like 12 games over 500. They're yeah, another race. They've always been a thorn in the Yankees' yeah. side for years and years. And they're another devil. They're another devil. They're another Tampa. I mean, they, they do so much with so little that it makes you sick as a Yankees fan because how the hell does a team that can't even have a $30 million payroll or whatever they are yeah. go up against the Yankees or, or at the luxury cap? And then the Yankees struggle, and those I'm guys do what they do. Struggle against them for some reason. It makes work. no, it makes no sense, Jeff. How does Tampa, and and the Rays, who I'm telling you, I bet you, I bet you, if you combined Stanton and uh, Garrett Cole, it's more than the the entire salary that is being paid out by the Rays, no. and maybe the Rays and. The A's combined. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm telling you, it's outrageous, but yet, 
they sit four games over 500, and those teams are 12. Yeah. And and I don't think the Yankees are better than them. They're not even close. No. They, those teams are better. They're Money just ball. better. Yeah, they're Remember just the better. Movie? Mm-hmm. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. Great movie. And they live by that, some yeah, teams. Nice, but yeah. Nice yeah. Too. And it's smart. Mm-hmm. It was one of the smartest things I've ever seen. You know, that, that, that the whole thing. And uh, who was that? Was that Brandon? Was that Billy Bean? Yeah, yeah, yeah Billy yeah. Bean, yeah, who did that. And... Uh, so there they are. They're going to go up against the A's. It'll be a good series because it's going to be a test for the Yankees. Mm-hmm. Um, these teams, these teams, though, like the the A's and the Rays. The other thing they do is they'll bunt, yeah. they'll they'll steal, they'll do whatever it takes. Good pitching, solid, just solid. And um, so that's them, Yankees. Another one, kind of like the Sabers to me right now. They they aggravate yeah. because you do you have no. When I'm a fan of that team, there's no excuse. Yeah, the team. Yeah, there's no excuse. They should be winning. They haven't won since you know what they got to win championships. They haven't won since two thousand nine. That's 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 absurd. Now we went through this in the past from eighty one to ninety four, not even making a playoff mm-hmm. appearance. And uh, or am I right? Yeah, I think I'm right. And then they break through in ninety six, obviously. And then I'll disclose. Like Tampa Bay Rays are up up there, and yeah, like they may walk away with it. They could the A's mm-hmm. and the Cubs. Cubs look good this year too. Look really good, and I told you the Padres are going to win it all. Yeah. Last exactly. night they had. I was watching. I was up a little bit watching them play the Reds, and uh, you know, and Machado hit a walk off, and um, it's nice to see the pot. I, for me, it's nice to see that place packed mm-hmm. because that's an old. You know, that that's a team I don't want to see go away. I'm kind of tired of these teams going away that I remember. You know, that are your normal. They always lost for yeah. years. I feel, winning. Like, I'd like to see the Royals get back in yeah. it again. I mean, they had that they had that great run where they mm-hmm. won championships, but now they've fallen back. And, you know, and, and I and I like the, Chicago White Sox, yeah, the Orioles. Orioles. How about the Orioles? Yeah, what happened to that team? Always a, you, you don't want to see them leave Baltimore, though. I don't oh. want to see them go. Where are they going to go? You going to go to Nashville? What the hell? I, you want to keep you. This is the point we we're trying to make about basketball. The one mm-hmm. time, you know, we're going to do all these. I'm bringing. I'm coming with my three friends. Or I'm going with my two friends. And in baseball, it's more like the cities. Yeah. To take the Orioles out of Baltimore would be, I think, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I don't even want to see it. No. You know, I think it's it, it changes everything. Well, baseball though is very nostalgic. That's just how baseball is. It's slow. It's nostalgic. You think about it's all stats. It's, it's all just memories. Like yeah. Took away the Brooklyn Dodgers out to L.A. years ago. Right. And that changed so, everything. Yeah. It changed. Baseball for forever, but the Orioles. I mean, these teams. You know what it is though. When you leave because you just can't win, because you're you're leaving because your ownership just isn't going to spend. I mean, attendance is going down. I mean, Machado was an Oriole. There's yeah. no reason for him to be to leave Baltimore. There's no way he should leave Baltimore. Um, you know, and look who's on Baltimore and yeah. San Diego right now is Hosmer. There was no reason for him to leave the, the Royals, and. Um, so that's all. That's a, just my biggest bitch yeah. about that, you know. And that's just me probably being an old man who yeah. just likes what I like and it makes me sad to watch them go to hell. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about this real quick, though, in baseball. There is the sticky stuff. We talked about the sticky stuff. Yeah, it's bad. So it is a mix of sunscreen and rosin, or it's a mix of pine tar and rosin. Um, probably pine tar. Yeah. Yeah, pine tar rod. Yeah, and and they do the sunscreen one though. If they're in a, in the it, that the difference is in the heat. Mm-hmm. I was reading that because um, Garrett Cole called um, the guy who's responsible for making this stuff back in 2019, and he said, "Hey, can you help me?" They have they have the quote. Hey, can you help me um, for uh, uh, the real hot uh, cold weather? I need help, and they mixed up a, a concoction for him. Um, so. Major League Baseball has decided, and it started Monday, mm-hmm. where there's regular checks of pitchers, even if the because it used to be before the manager, the opposing manager, would have to request it and say, "Oh, geez, this guy's got a yeah. got a, a file in his, you know, whatever emery board." Um, so now that doesn't have to happen. There's one mandatory check per game of pitcher, and and relievers, mm-hmm. and it's going to happen in between innings or during pitching changes, as to not slow the game down. Um, ten game suspensions are what you get. I didn't hear what, what about, happens if what you went twice. The catchers all too. They, they could hide stuff for that, That'll be interesting. Yeah, that's a good all. point, John. Someone said that a ball 
went and I, it was uh, they didn't say the player's name, but a ball. You know how they throw balls out all the time. They, they were going, Jesus, why can't they use the same ball? It went into a dugout, and one of the other players went to go pick it up, and it couldn't go off his hand. He was like this with it. And um, the problem we have here now. Let me let me give you the quote of Garrett Cole. It's hard to grip the ball. It's part of the reason everybody on the field has something. I would hate to see players get hurt. Talking about in the cold, losing the grip, and not 100 miles an hour at someone's head. And every play, every baseball player I've heard, exactly. batter says, fine, use it. I don't want to get hit in the head. But don't use it. See, that it's being used for a different reason now. It's being used for spin rate, which makes the ball move. Which is like why guys would use spitballs, or why they would put... Uh, you, when what's his name would come to the mound with the thing you'd file your nails with, and then it falls out of his pocket. He's like, "What? What?" And he because he was trying to deny it. Remember Phil Neeper? Oh yes. And I remember um, that well. Yeah. And uh, so it's the same thing because if you put the ball, you put something on the ball, you spin it. It's like if you ever bowled. If you spin the ball, it hooks. Right. If you spin this ball, it's gonna hook. Like all and, them sidearm pitchers yeah. too. They they hit something going yeah. on too. Oh, I know. They would default. Yeah. So now. He is begging Major League Baseball, Garrett. He, he did. He came right out, Garrett Cole, and said, work with us. You know, basically admit, obviously, you got to admit it, because Trevor Bauer told them two years ago that it was happening. Three years ago on Twitter, he told he told Major League Baseball, he told everyone. That's why he started telling the batter, the pitcher, the pitch before it came. Because he'd say curveball, and he knew he was not going to hit it, because he's spinning it like a, you know. There's a whole science behind that that I don't like. But it makes sense because they're talking about spin rates and all that. And let's say a guy's spin rate is not, his spin rate's an 88. Let's say for him to then show up and gain the spin rate goes up 10 percent to 98 or something. Yeah. It's just not no, normal or natural. Um, and so here we are again with baseball. It doesn't stop with no. this sport. Um, we don't know it's go on what the hell is going on and. Um, but it was different when it was emery boards. It was different when it was like that. You know what I mean? Because that was like, it, you're bringing it to the mound. It's a, it's, it's actually the, the, they put it in your yeah, back pocket. this, and then spitball, remember the whole spitball thing? Oh, yeah. You couldn't go to your mouth near the, near the, but you can go to your mouth behind, but you couldn't go to your mouth near the, the rubber. Right. Yeah. So, um, and guys were doing everything and licking their hand. And I know why they would do that. That was in the winter when it was cold. Mm -hmm. Um, but see, this take, they always go to another level. Okay, yeah, they used to take the green pills, you know, the, the stimulants to stay awake. All right, I understand that, but now we're going to go to another level. Now we're going to go to the, you know, PEDs. So where does pitchers go? I mean, do they just keep, they just keep going and going? And, uh, so I, I give Major League Baseball credit. they got to do something. Right. Um, and uh, Garrett Cole is, uh, is admitting it. I mean, Josh Donaldson called him out on it. Um, but so did Trevor Bauer. Mm -hmm. Trevor Bauer is a modern day Canseco, but not really because he's still playing. He's he's calling it on himself. Yeah. Like he's doing it. Yeah. And he don't care. And he's telling them if you're not I remember he said pretty much, if you're not gonna do anything about it, I'm doing it. And nothing happened and he did it. Yeah. And uh, he keeps doing it. And I still love it when you see him tell when I see him from the mound tell the batter a curveball's coming, it's hilarious it's kinda of funny. Yeah. And uh and then he throws a fastball, which is even funnier. <laughs> that's that's oh, great when that happens. Oh, yeah. And then they get mad. Yeah, they get mad about. Yeah. Let's do something real fast before we shut the show down. Um, real fast. I want to go around the horn on football. Sure. Real quick. I'm dying to do this with, with Wade and everybody else here. Um, this is just off the top of your head. If you can't remember, don't worry about it. We're all losing our minds here. Um, Rob, let me let me let me do this myself first. Give you guys time to think. It's basically your top five NFL quarterbacks right now. Right now, top five. Even if you want to go a little further than top five, let's say, okay, maybe you want to go to six, whatever, because there's too many. It's a tie to you. Um, for me, I would say number one is still Mahomes. To me, it's got to be Mahomes. Number one, uh, that's my mind. I agree. Uh, can we? Maybe we'll do it this way, and, and then Wade, you can interject too, okay? I'm going to say a name. You tell me where we're at with it. Mine is still number one, Mahomes. You? He's uh, fourth on my list. Fourth on your list. Okay. Well, then we'll move on. I'm going to put you at number four. All right, Mahomes. All right, how about uh, Allen? 
He's number fifth on my list. Number five. Okay. Let's go, Alan. There, number five. All right. <laughs> Let's go with um, Tom Brady. He is number two on my list. Number two. Okay. Brady. Uh, let's say, how do you feel about this? I didn't even ask you, I'm sorry. How do you feel about what we're hearing here? Um, I think Mahomes definitely, I, I would definitely put him higher than four. I would, I think he's still the best quarterback in the league, too. Um, Josh Allen, I would say, might go third or fourth on my list. Okay. John, any thoughts? And uh, where, where would you, who's, you know what, screw it, hold on a minute. Give me the rest of your list. Let's just do uh, that. Well, uh, number, then we're going we're gonna to critique your list. Yeah, uh, number one that I have on my list is a quarterback who has just been solid year after year after year after year, and he never gets the respect he deserves. Um, he He's amazing, especially with that garbage offensive line of last year and what he did last year uh, and for the trade talks and rumors and stuff like that. Believe it or not, Russell Wilson is number one on my list right now. Okay. Um, Wilson has uh, more, than proved, more than proved himself, um, and he's an experienced, smart quarterback. Uh, I like the guy. I like the guy a lot, and uh, it's too bad that he doesn't have the weapons that he needs because um he could he could really be the quarterback to if he had if he had everything that Tom Brady had has, has right now. God, I mean look at yeah. what would Russell Wilson right. really do. And the same thing kinda uh puts I, I kinda think of the same thing uh with the third person on my list. If he had if he had some receivers, he would just be who he was in college and that's Lamar Jackson. Uh, Lamar Jackson was the truth in college. He's, he did what no other quarterback has ever done, uh, run for over 1,500 yards, throw for over 3,500 yards. Uh, he was a Heisman candidate his last two years. Uh, the guy is unbelievable. You get people around uh, Lamar Jackson, uh, you get people around Russell Wilson, and they'll show you how they're the best quarterbacks in the league. All right, now we're going to have to look into this. Dive into this. Um, Rogers for me has got to be in here, um, and I don't know where, but I, 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 he's going to be in my top five. I'm probably throwing Lamar Jackson out. I'm probably putting him number six. I do like Lamar Jackson though a lot. I do, I do, I really, really do. I think he's, I think he, I, I don't like how he plays in the playoffs. I think that's been tough, a lot of turnovers. But I do like him, and I think he's awfully good. Um, if you put him on a team that had like what the Chiefs even have. That'd be nice for him. That would be a good start. Um, but I think he's awfully, I mean, come on. He's, he's ridiculous. He's got an arm. He's got a gun. He can make him run and the whole thing. He's a pretty smart quarterback. No one's ever said he can't. You know, he's got problems with playbooks and all that stuff. But for me, i got to get Rodgers in this mix uh, somewhere. Um, I love Russell Wilson, by the way, too. I'm a yes, big I fan of Russell yeah. Wilson. Mm -hmm. I think I wanted him in Chicago. I was hoping, beyond hope, that that was true. Um, I'm happy with Justin Fields, but I'm glad I would have loved to have had Wilson there. I'm trying to think who they do have around him, and I don't really care. Metcalf, like they. Uh, oh, he's good. Yeah, yeah DK. They, Metcalf, he's yeah. awfully good. Yeah, that's a good one. They could use another. They could use a compliment, mm -hmm. and maybe a running game. A running would be game. nice. A yeah. Game. And an old line is just solid, despicable. They, they hit. He got hit so much. They're yeah. lucky he he made it mm -hmm. out of the season. But I got to get Rodgers in there. I think Aaron Rodgers is still awfully good. I mean, what he did the year before last, and even last year wasn't bad. The year before last was probably his best season ever. Um, I think if you put him on Tampa, he would be dominating and unbelievable. I got him at number three right now. Number three. That's kind of where I probably would have penciled him in. I don't mind the... I actually don't even mind where... You know what? The more I think about it... It's hard to not even make Brady be number one in a lot of ways. If he's going to keep playing this way and keep winning, how the hell? He probably should be number one. I mean, he played great last year. I mean, it wasn't like he just was, it wasn't like he was just a, a clock manager. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. But, so, man, this is, it's a, I knew this would be a tough discussion because sure I like Mahomes a lot. I like him a real lot. I think he also, um, last year, took a lot of hits and more than. We I mean, look at all the injuries he suffered. 
Um, Josh Allen's good. There's no doubt. I think Josh Allen, in my eyes, um, will have to. We were just talking about this before the show. We'll have to control the running a little because he's so big. Chances of him getting hurt is t- is probably there. You know, if he keeps running as much, but he's got a gun. The guy's unbelievable. Um, he can run too. Yeah, that's the thing. And we were just saying, but you got to watch the running. Because it could you get hurt when you're a big guy like that, and you know I know he's got he's got his he's still got his moments. You know he gets picked. He yeah. you know he tries he thinks his arm is bigger than you know I've seen it and we've seen that with guys like Elway and stuff. You know he he knows his reads. Yeah. like you know he knows where he knows where his first read is down to second. where if to second down mm-hmm. to uh, if he is getting in trouble. So um, he's a smart quarterback. He's not only does he have the gun, but he's a smart quarterback, and uh, you know you do have to like the Bills' chances this year of um, possibly I, making a Super Bowl. Yeah, definitely go back to the AFC Championship, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but I really, really like him. Um, the arm, though, sometimes I think does hurt. I, I mean, we've seen it though. Elway, Cutler was, I mean, obviously not in that group, but Cutler was the same way. He had the arm, so he was just going to gun it through, and he gets picked. You know, uh, Favre was like that. And um, so you yeah, know, yeah, and I, 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 I really dislike Favre. I, uh, I mean, the guy has thrown so many picks, and I will blame many of them picks on his, on that arm strength that everybody's seen that he has. He's throwing off his back foot mm-hmm. so much, and that's why. Oh, the he was picks out of came. control. Yeah, yeah, he was. Um, he tech, yes, yeah, and no, one, and it just. And it worked sometimes, sometimes, and sometimes it don't. Right. I remember that interception against the Vi- when he was with the Vikings. Could have went to the NFC Championship, yeah. and it was just it, that's it was exactly what you said. Mm-hmm. It was doing that and just thinking his arm could outdo anything. Right. You know, even at that old that age. old age. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I mean, he had. I mean, it was kind of an Elway situation. Elway was like that. Remember, he thought oh, he could yeah. throw the ball through the wall yeah. and, or through a human even mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, it, it just. And Kelly had that for his moments too yeah, in his yeah. young days because these first guys. Few years. You know who didn't? We were talking about this guy going outside. We're going. No, we were just talking about Dan Marino, and it kind of. I kind of think about it. Dan Marino couldn't play defense. Dan Marino certainly couldn't run the ball, and he had no running backs. Every year that guy played, they never put it together for him. Why in a passing <laughs> attack there? Yeah, I don't and, know why. And even then, they wouldn't even put receivers around him after some of those guys left, oh. like Duper and all that. Played. Like, yeah, when those guys left, then it was turning into what? They were bringing in older Keith Jackson, a tight end. Um, Didn't they get Irving Fryer? Irving Fryer, Fryer. yes, he was there. Um, But it was all kind of secondhand little kind of moves. We were talking about Bernie Parmalee as the running back. Oh, my God. Sammy Smith. And he was a guy who I thought will always go down as my fave, one of the best, but never won. And it's... That was a one-pass-happy team there. That's all they could do. Yeah. Because when they would run, when that when the games would happen, they could run. Remember how they, they were? I remember how bad with the time with the Bills. They actually could run that game. I think the Bills ended up winning, yeah. but it was a hell of a game. It was a playoff game. And um, it was like forty something to the, thirty-eight. Yes, it was yeah. always a high-scoring game. And yeah. they played. And it was only because uh, they and could. If you're putting up that many points on the Bills, you know you got a yeah. good offense. Those you days. Those days. Mm-hmm. Those days. Bills had one of the most solid defenses. Yeah, yeah. In, in that time era, they were the only probably one of a few teams that could do it too back then. Yeah, Robin, any thoughts on quarterback? I know I didn't get them all from you. Do you? Uh, you you said Mahomes would be number one to you. If you had to pick number two, who's number two in your mind? Mm, um, I would probably go Russell Wilson. Right. Yeah. And see, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right now. I I'm gonna go Brady one because if he's gonna continue to play at that level, he's I feel he's got to be one. I think number two for me, I'm gonna take Mahomes and put him at two. Number three for me is gonna be Rodgers. Number four is gonna be Wilson. Number five Allen, and I think I think that's where I would go with this. I don't. I'm not, you know what? I never disliked Tom Brady. It's not even that. I never did. Never did. It's, he's just, the story's great coming from the, you know, how far down he comes on drafted. And uh, he's still playing like he's, I mean, it was one of his best years last year. It's a coach on the field. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. With a, it's a coach on the field who has a ability, the ability yeah. and yeah. the uh, obviously Brady can't run or anything like that, but you're talking about a guy who knows the game inside out, who could read a defense. Like well, he's no one of the other. best ever. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's Quick release, right? Him. He doesn't get hit. Right. You know. He mm-hmm. tells the coaches what to do, basically. Because I remember that that statement, coach on the field, was always your backup. Like, you know, that was like, okay, if he's got to come in, at least he knows everything. This guy's doing it all. He Frank, knows everything. Uh, Frank Reich was yeah. back in the day. Yes, just like him. Like that guy who keeps on every team. He was on New Orleans or the Bears. Daniels, his last name is. Oh, Chase Daniels. Chase Daniels. Yeah. That's him. He's not really have any ability. You just know that he knows the plays, and, you know, he's going to be he solid. He lasted 10 years. To the what a year. Never started. That's got to yeah. be a great job. Probably hit like I was in high school stars. basketball. What? That was like I was in high school basketball. Yeah, all right. On that note, um, that's where goal cutters goes to hell, and we're done. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying, Robin. All right. Yeah, you know, I don't want to talk to him. No, you were, you, you did. You were, you I knew were, the I know. plays, but I... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's true. All right. Well, that's it, guys. Goal cutters for another week. Um, yeah, been fun. We'll be back next Friday with all kinds of whatever happened in the NBA, NHL. We'll be back to talk about it. Take care, everyone. Have a great day.